my parents have this silverware box. And I think we can do it a little better than this. I'm going to avoid the problem with the lid entirely by just making it a tray. It's going to be inside of a drawer so it doesn't need a lid. I'll just make it deeper and that will allow me to fit everything in there. Since the first stage of this project is basically just making a box, I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about how I do dovetails. Um, a lot of people I know who buy dovetail jigs end up not using them as much as they expected to. This ends up sitting on a shelf. Uh, I think it takes too much time to set it up. I may have to keep going back to the instructions to remember how to, how to do it. I use my Akita jig very often, so that's not a problem for me. The way this jig accomplishes variable spacing is that there's a bar at the back that the guide fingers snap into on eighth inch increments. It also lets you use a lot of different angles than your standard dovetail angles. The thicker the material is, the more limited your options are. What I like about this jig is you don't have to fuss with it. The only thing I have to do is mark the thickness of the piece on the face of it with the marking gauge and then set the depth of the router bit to the line. And that's it. It's going to fit every time. Regardless of what kind of jig you're using, I suggest you back up the piece with a sacrificial piece, and that will protect that back edge from blowout. The actual routing of the parts happens really quickly, and the setup time is pretty minimal, so I use dovetails for almost everything that needs a joint like this. It's almost faster for me to do a dovetail than it is to do like a, a simple rabbit joint. And I swap out the tail guides for the pin guides, and there are different. There's a different set of guides for each angle bit. When you route the pins, the best results you're going to get are if you do a shallow climb cut across the front, going from right to left, and then go in and do the same thing on the back, and then take out the middle. I remove the plastic from the, from the front. This dramatic routing shot. With assembly, the pieces fit together perfectly, so usually you don't even need clamps. You just put it together and square it up and leave it alone. For laying out the silverware, at first I had it in my head that it needed to be symmetrical somehow. And once I let go of that, then I could come up with something that was just functional. I knew I wanted a couple of strips going from front to back to act as handles. But you have to keep in mind that you need to be able to reach in there and get silverware from the bottom of the tray. A lot of silverware trays have just a bar going across the middle that's notched, and the silverware fits into those notches. That really lets them sort of flop around, kind of making this deeper than normal. I wanted to constrain this each, each section of the silverware at both the top and the bottom, and you would reach in at the middle. At the handle end of the utensil, each one is shaped the same, so I can use the same lock to constrain those. So I, I just ripped a strip at an angle on the bandsaw, and then the offcut from that could be glued onto the flat side to make a trapezoid shape. And the opposite end, I just made it up as I went along, just trying to match the shape the best way that made sense. I won't claim to be an expert on flocking. Um, if you don't know what flocking is, it's these little fibers, and you you paint the surface, and then you sort of spray on the, the fibers and they, into the wet paint, and it becomes a sort of velvety surface, which works really well for odd-shaped things that you can't easily fit a piece of fabric into. So what I find, just like if you were painting a wall, it takes more than one coat to cover. So, because it's an oil-based paint, it takes a really long time to dry, and I was on a time crunch. So I did the first coat with acrylic. You really have to get very even coverage, because it's almost impossible to touch this thing up once you're done. Uh, 
if you try to paint onto the fibers that are already there, it makes them hard, and you'll never get that spot to blend back in again. So the fun part is spraying on the little fabric things. And the hard part is waiting for this thing to dry before you do anything. Give it a whole 24 hours. Don't touch it. Don't look at it. Just pretend it's not there. So that's it. I hope you learned something about doing dovetails and flocking.